So now I'm going to go back on up and say invoice and say, let's say this is customer number two again. And so this is actually a fairly complex transaction that this records now. And so what's this going to do when we, when we record the sales tax, it's going to, there's inventory involved. So there's a lot going on. It's an invoice. It's going to increase the, uh, accounts receivable. It's going to increase the accounts receivable by the full amount, including the sales tax. Let's make it the generic five generic five, including the, the sales tax to 131.25. Revenue is going to go up by the 125. The difference is going to go into the, uh, to the uh, sales tax payable of 625. It's not going to hit the income statement. That's kind of weird because you can see, you can imagine it. Why don't I just record income as 131.25? And then when I pay the sales tax, I record a sales tax expense because the sales tax is not in theory subject to you, your, your business, it's, it's, you're just a collection agency. It's not part of your revenue and it's not going to be part of your expenses. That's the idea. It's going to go on the, it's going to go on the, on, on, on a, a balance sheet account. And then also, uh, inventory is going to go down by, I think we said $50, the amount that was driven by the item here for the cost. And we're going to have the cost of goods sold go up the net impact on net income will be 125 minus the cost of goods sold, which I believe was the 50. And we also have a sub ledger for, for the customer two, uh, which will track the accounts receivable that we'll need to collect in the future and a sub ledger for the inventory item now, because we're tracking it on a perpetual inventory system, tracking it by unit. So let's save it, close it and check all that out and see if that is indeed the case going to the to the balance sheet running it and then scroll down so now we've got the accounts receivable so if, if i go into the ar there it is and that's for the full amount of uh hold on a second that doesn't look like the right one that's not the right one at all let me change the range up here did i put it in for 2023 2020 three boom there it is let's bring that back to 2022 i'm going to change the date going into that one let's bring this back you're too far in the future you're too far in the future we're working in the past man so there let's do that let's save it all right so there it is 131.25 going back the other side's on the income statement running it so now we've got the sale of product going into it there is the 125 scrolling back up the other side is in the sales tax and this is where our focus is of course where they put this long account name california department that's because you might have multiple sales tax you would think you would just call it sales tax payable a liability because you owe it in the future but they put this long name because you might have multiple people that you might be paying the sales tax to. There's the 625 and inventory is going down. So inventory went up when, when I added like the beginning balance of inventory. And then it went back down by, I believe this uh, 50, this one right here, that one right there. So scrolling back up and then the cost of goods sold over here on the income statement is affected. And we're also tracking the inventory and the sub ledger for the customer. So the point is the main point we're looking at, of course, is the fact that I had to enter an invoice or sales receipt and the item in order for me to get this, uh, this payable to track the payable that I'm in the future going to then pay with the sales tax widget. So we can imagine after a month or after a quarter or after a year, we're going to have to take the money that we collected from the sales tax, which is going to accumulate in the liability account. We'll use the sales tax widget over here, which is going to be in the sales tax area to then pay the sales tax uh, using using the, the, the pay the sales tax, which is a little bit difficult to kind of view in real time because uh, I mean, it's, it's difficult when you're trying to do it like in the past in a practice problem because the sales tax runs kind of real time, but it'll generate a check when you have an amount that you owe here, you can generate a sales tax check based on, you know, what you owe and that will decrease the sales tax here uh, when you pay it. 
So the point is if I if I look at my flow chart over here, I have to then enter my sales tax if I'm gonna use that widget method, the whole cool little widget thing within QuickBooks, I have to enter my sales using items, using invoices and sales receipts because those are the things that help me to track the sales tax. So I can't really just wait till something clears the bank if I wanna use that cool little tool.